Okay, the number one thing we want to do is check your system water pressure. You have one main feed line coming into your house or your property, your barn, whatever you're going to check. And there from there it'll branch out. Well, this outside hose bib for the garden hose and washing the car and stuff, this is tied into your main system. So what we're going to do is just put on a simple water pressure gauge. This gauge is made by Watts. And I think Watts is the same company that made our 2.1 gallon expansion tank that we're going to put on. So we'll go ahead and put this gauge on here. But before you do, just to make sure no mud daubers or anything is up in there, go ahead and just run a little bit of water out and clean that out. It won't make too bad of a mess. And then we will just screw this on. I don't like a loose fit on that, guys. I like to get it kind of snug. Without overdoing it. I mean, a drop or two in bad. I'll go ahead and rotate the red all the way over, and we are ready to go. Go ahead and open it up. We'll call it 56. Good deal. Now we will match the air pressure in our expansion tank. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that we're in a rural area. Our water pressure will be fairly consistent. But when you get into the city limits and smaller municipalities and subdivisions, your water pressure can vary. It can easily vary 10 pounds per square inch, uh, especially in the evening, uh, in the late evening, like when everybody's probably taking a shower or a bath. And a lot of that just depends on your entire city or your municipality water system in general. If that's the case, you can take a pressure reading in the evening, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening. Go ahead and take one at noon the next day and just find you a decent average. If you're reading 45 at 9 o'clock at night and reading 55 at noon, just call it 50 PSI. And you'll use that pressure value when you pressurize your expansion tank. We checked our water pressure on the house, on the system, and we decided it was about 56 PSI. It's been my experience, and I've put on a dozen of these. They normally come with around 40 PSI in it, plus or minus a couple. Let's see what we're at. 40.1. I think the last one I checked I installed for a customer was exactly 39. Okay, we're at 40. What we're going to do is just use our inflator. It's so handy. We're full of battery. And we will set the inflator up. To 56 and then we're going to check it. That's running up the PSI. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera or not very good. I'm dancing around with the reflection. We'll just leave it on 56 for the target pressure. These inflators are wonderful for this. That's showing 38. We was at 40.1. So now I'm going to increase my target to 2 PSI. 58. Now we'll let her eat. That automatic shut off is sure sweet, ain't it? I love that. All right, get her off so we know. Lose any air, we will check it again. We're shooting for 56. We're at 58. Now that air will cool off some. That compresses air when it goes in, 58. I think I'm gonna leave it at 58, two PSI over. I'd rather have it two over than two under. Cause here's another thing to think about. This is going in the basement. A lot of times it's 65, 68 degrees in there. We'll leave it at 58. We will put the warranty back on. That is a threaded cap. You should put it back in its place. And I like to mount mine vertical, so I am going to mount it straight up. You can mount them upside down. It's just however you mount them. Keep in mind, if you want to check them, you need to get this cap off. Thanks for watching. Work safe out there and have a good one.